On mate, Steve Dixon. Going really good, please. I'm the, the dusty bogan, yeah. Hey, ben, mate, you yeah. look okay to me, you might be dusty, but you're gonna be settled down in this rain. <laughs> Well, the rain came in just at the end, so we did all right, eh? Hey, mate, timing was spectacular. I think we may have had God on our side today. He might like this. Mate, I love what you had to say. It was so good, you know. And you know what? If you tell the truth, it makes life really easy. My grandfather told me many, many years ago, don't ever lie to people because you've got to remember them all. Mm. And he said, you're not that smart. It's the truth, mate. I had a good grandfather. He was a man with a lot of sense. Yeah, that's that's got to be true because I think when my dad gets on it, he always tells the same story. So well, it's, it's, a, it's he a, must be telling the truth, eh? Hey, you know, Ben, it, it's a common yarn. I mean, you know, you listen to your elders, your grandparents, and your forebearers. I mean, and that's not so much so different about what we're talking about here. Mm. You know, we want our children to grow up, and we want them to have similar memories to what we had. The environment is changing day by day, and technology is moving forward, but don't destroy our children and this lefty labor green ideology that's exactly what it's doing yeah. you know i want children to have, grow up to be children let them grow up to be what they want to be don't dictate and don't indoctrinate that, that's they're really like with the safe school it's just one example of many things and it's like they call it cultural marxism you know and I, I didn't understand what that was i thought what is this but you know marxism is sort of like that um controlling all means of production you know whether that's economic or political and, and now it's cultural marxism they're trying to control culture you know like we see this uh the lgbtqi all this and we've, we've seen the influence in sports it's in the mainstream media now they're bringing it into education it's in politics it's you know that the lgbtqi they've lobbied the police force and the military it's saturated our, they've really saturated our culture they're, they're robbing us of anything conservative or having any common sense view on ben I, I i think now is the time where we've got to draw the line in the sand i mean as humanity and as human beings we need to push back you know we we are we are a gentle species to a point but when you push humanity too hard in the wrong direction it will push back and i think that's where we are today i mean this is about the future of our children and about our grandchildren, and this will be hundreds of years into the future. The impact of this ideology that's being implemented through governments, yeah. and you know, this is not about the teachers. It's not the teachers' mm. fault by any means, but we have to stop this. We've got to draw a line in the sand. We've had the vote on gay marriage. That's happened. It's been and yeah. gone. But yeah. when you look at evolution, as I spoke about earlier, I believe in God. There are a lot of people who believe in evolution. That's all of our calls. You know, that's the freedom of speech and the yeah. freedom to think. Yep. which God gave us that very right. Mm -hmm. But if you believe in evolution, we climbed up out of the ocean, we became a species, and there are male and female. Yeah. You know, there's not all these other species. It's mm -hmm. male and female, be that ducks, be that geese, be that antelope, lions, whatever the case may be, and human beings. Yeah. I believe in God under the Bible. It says man and woman, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. not Adam and Steve. Yeah. You know, the truth of the world is that we have male and females. For all of those other people who wish to go in a different direction, that's their choice. And it's a freedom of choice. And mm. I don't hold that against them. Mm. But sure as hell, don't try to do that to the general population. That's where the general population will push back. I mean, we have big issues. You know, we are on the brink of a potentially World War Three. Mm. You know, there are a lot of things happening in the world at the moment. But no, they try to dumb us down and attack our children when the world is in crisis. You know, the cost of living is going through the roof. There are so many issues facing humanity. Mm. Let's deal with those things that are going to destroy us and kill us. Let's not do it to ourselves. And that's where governments, I believe, particularly Labor and the Greens are going. Yeah, they're out of control, mate. And I remember I seen your video on the Bundaberg rum and you were asking people, what's the taxation on this? And it was 70%, you it know, was. like... It's and out it, of control. It is. it is. How big is how big is this government gonna get? And and this is the thing with the safe school, safe schools. It's like, when will we say no? The government's not required to tell me how, my children what to think. Like, we're not requiring you to tax us this much or be involved in every aspect of our lives. Like, some people are in love with the government. They just want them the nanny state. They just they want them to look after every aspect of their life. They have no personal responsibility anymore. It's like, for me, I'm like, what? I look at people, I think, when is it going to end? When can you? When are you going to limit the power of government instead of having them bloody control everything? I have, a, I have a solution to that problem, Ben, and 
I was a member of the LMP. I helped the LMP come together as one organisation. Oh, yeah. I've been involved in politics for a number of years and mm -hmm. there are many, many good people in politics in many different parties, but the truth of the matter is, Pauline Hanson and One Nation, they are leading by example, be that for coal-fired power stations, be the bank inquiry that's going on at the moment. That was started by Pauline Hanson, yeah, but everybody else at the that. moment is going, hey, well, we started that. Well, they bloody well didn't. It was started by Pauline Hanson and people like Malcolm Roberts. He actually chaired that inquiry mm. until they fired him. Mm. But we have Labor members of Parliament right now that have still broken Section 44 of the Act and they're still in Parliament, but they got rid of Malcolm Roberts. You ask yourself, wonder why they did that. Was it because of the banking inquiry? You know, was it a, a strategic strike to get him out of Parliament? I mean, you see the media honed down on Pauline Hanson. She does one thing wrong and they all belt her. Mm. We've got governments that are systematically destroying our way of life. You know, we, we don't have a great national defence force in this country. We've got a piss poor tax regime. You know, if you're going to fix two things, fix taxation and make sure we've got a great defence of this country because yeah. without it, you won't have a country. And then forget yeah. all the other problems because you won't have them. Yeah, that's right. Um, you touched on Pauline Hanson, the media attacking you guys, because me and Malcolm Roberts, I met him at, we were at a um, park doing a, it was about um, looking up, it was fathers to have equal, equal access to their kids and it yep. was about um, stopping domestic violence. And the media just jumped on Malcolm Roberts, right? And they were they were just giving him a bash and he almost, he was getting pushed up against the uh, barbecue, you know? And I thought to myself like, wow, I've never seen it. You know, I never got to see that for myself. And then I, I actually was there and I was like, mate, I stood in and I said, look, mate, the problem is you, the media, you know? You're rubbishing Malcolm Roberts, a guy who's standing up, trying to do something about domestic violence. And, uh, and here you are, you're absolutely rubbishing him. Well, where are the judges? I said to where are the judges going? Oh, the media kicking down the door of the judges who are letting pedophiles and rapists walk the streets, you know? And, and then when, this is the thing, when we watched the video, watched what they filmed, the media, it was all cut up and it was just, a, I thought, wow, the spin they put on it was out of control. You know what I mean? It's, and I just, this was at the time of, the state election and they were really going after one nation you know ben I, I remember very well i worked in that house there behind you for 11 years i was a member of parliament and as one nation we put forward a philosophy relating to domestic violence and also the impact on men and women yeah. and and the thing people need to understand predominantly it's all about the children you know first and foremost yeah, yeah, and yeah. you see a lot of people use the word gender neutral we actually wanted to put gender neutral into the process where people go before the court. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you're a parent. And that's the way you should be recognised. But there are so many men today committing suicide through this process because they are ostracised from their children. For some reason, young boys are being told basically these days that you're bad, you're, you know, you do the wrong thing yeah. by girls. That's how they're being brought up. And this is all part of this process of indoctrination. I mean, men and boys need to be men and boys and girls and women need to be girls and women and we should love them and we should promote these things but that's not what Anastasia Palaszczuk wants, that's not what Jackie Trad wants, that's not what the Greens want. What they want is indoctrination of these crazy philosophies yeah. and we're here today that's to say stop, it's enough, mm. it's done, mm. it's over mm. and I gotta right. go. Hey mate, thank ben, you so much. It's been lovely to meet Cheers. you. Cheers.